Hello data scientist welcome to skillkate as humans we have this inherent ability to transfer knowledge across tasks what we acquire as knowledge while learning about one task we utilize it further to expedite learning new but related tasks for example if you already know how to ride a bicycle you can learn how to drive a motorcycle more easily with some fine tuning on controlling the engine power or if you know how to ride by hand you can learn how to type it from the keyboard by fine tuning your brain to learn the location of the keys so it's quite evident that as humans we do not learn everything from scratch when attempting to learn a new task or skill rather we transfer or leverage our knowledge from what we have learned in the past and that's precisely what transfer learning is in the context of us humans in the context of machines transfer learning is storing knowledge gained solving one problem and applying it to a different but related problem a typical example would be to reuse a model trained for autonomous driving of cars for a related task of autonomous driving of trucks with some fine tuning to account for the vehicle size and weight sounds amazing right well in this three part learning series we are going to discuss the basic intuition behind transfer learning then deep dive into google's bert model which has achieved superhuman performance in its linguistic understanding and towards the end we will see transfer learning in action by building a fake news detection model using the pre-trained bert model as the base now let's continue on this first part which is transfer learning intuition based on the exciting work that has happened in the machine learning ecosystem in the last decade we now have the ability to train highly accurate ml models and in fact we are now at a stage that for many tasks state of the art models have reached a level where their performance is so good that it is no longer a hindrance for users for instance the newest resnet model trained on the stanford's imagenet dataset achieved superhuman performance at recognizing objects Similarly Google's BERT model trained on the whole Wikipedia database and Google Books also achieved superhuman performance at understanding the English language. Similarly speech recognition error has constantly dropped and is more accurate than typing at this point. And really the list goes on. This level of maturity has enabled the large scale deployment of these models to millions of users and its widespread adoption. Majority of these superhuman models are publicly available today for small businesses to bootstrap on their uh, big ideas and aspiring data scientists like you to perform live hands-on and learn. As next steps, there's a genuine need to efficiently use these models' knowledge into lightweight applications, and hence transfer learning is attracting bright minds to solve the challenges that are looking at us at this point. Andrew NG who is a renowned Stanford professor AI scientist and co-founder of Coursera delivered a famous lecture in 2016 at the annual ML and neurosciences conference NIPS where he mentioned that after supervised learning transfer learning will be the next driver of ML commercial success well it is indisputable that machine learning use in industry has so far been driven mostly by supervised learning However, supervised learning has its limitations in that it demands massive amounts of data all the time, which is expensive in both time and compute resources. And not just that, large machine learning models also have an environmental impact, which gives us enough reasons to believe that there's a need to figure out ways to democratize the world of machine learning where large pre-trained models are shared in the open source and reused, resulting in reduced overall compute cost and carbon footprints. Now when we have established the fact that transfer learning is the need of the hour at this point let's try and understand how transfer learning actually works In the classic supervised learning scenario of machine learning if we intend to train a model for some task A we assume that we are provided with enough labeled data for the same then we go ahead and train a model A on this data set and expect it to perform well on the unseen data Let's say the task here is to detect pedestrians in daytime images. On another occasion for some task B, 
In the same domain of object detection, we again require label data to train a new model B. Let's say the task this time is to detect pedestrians in nighttime images. Here this traditional supervised learning paradigm breaks down if we do not have sufficient label data to train a reliable model B. Well, with transfer learning, we may reuse the knowledge gained in solving task A, which is to detect pedestrians in daytime images and apply this knowledge to task B, which is of course to detect pedestrians in nighttime images requiring a small data set for this retraining. As an example here, let's say we have previously trained a CNN model for task A, which is vehicle image classification into these categories, car, truck, bicycle, etc. And now we intend to build a model to just predict the binary classes car and truck as task B. Based on our understanding, we know that CNNs typically aim to detect edges in the first layer, shape or form in the middle layers and task specific features in the last layers also called the model head. In transfer learning, the first and middle layers from model A are used as is and the final layer or the model head is the one which is retrained or fine tuned because the model has already been trained to recognize objects in the earlier levels we simply retrain the subsequent layers to understand what distinguishes car from a truck this way we are making use of the label data from the source task a on which it was trained originally this is a further simplified representation of the transfer learning architecture we have been discussing here the model and the head are broken down into two separate blocks well transfer learning offers a number of advantages the most important of which are uh, reduced training time improved performance in most circumstances and the absence of a large amount of data the best part is that a highly accurate model can be built with fairly little training data using transfer learning as the model is already pre-trained on a huge source of data set. These are the different transfer learning strategies and techniques which can be applied based on the domain task at hand or the availability of data. These are inductive transfer learning, transductive transfer learning and unsupervised transfer learning. I'll provide a link in the description for your uh, further reading on these uh, transfer learning strategies. Talking about the applications, transfer learning has numerous use cases across natural language processing, computer vision and speech recognition. NLP is however the most appealing transfer learning application as it solves cross domain tasks by leveraging the knowledge of pre-trained AI models that understand linguistic characteristics. Deep learning models such as BERT, TensorFlow, Universal Model, etc. are used in everyday NLP tasks like next word prediction, question answering and machine translation. In computer vision, transfer learning is commonly used in image recognition, object detection, image noise removal and other image related tasks. And in speech recognition, when we say Alexa or Hey Google, the primary AI model developed for uh, speech recognition is busy at the back end processing our commands. By the way, in the next part of this series, I'll be demonstrating the insane capabilities of the BERT model to you, which has shown superhuman performance in its language understanding. I'm telling you, it will freak you out. Finally, now let's go over how transfer learning works in practice. The first step is to decide the pre-trained model to use as the base depending on the task. To be compatible, transfer learning requires a strong correlation between the knowledge of the pre-trained source model and the target task domain at hand. For example, the fake news detection model that we shall be building in the third part of this learning series, we shall require a pre-trained language model that has solid linguistic understanding and we shall be using the BERT model for this particular task. As step two, we make a base model, basically the one we chose in the first step and initialize its uh, network weights. As a third step, we freeze the weights on the starting layers from our pre-trained model. If we don't do this, we lose all of the previous learning. 
then we create new trainable layers generally feature extraction layers are the only knowledge we reuse from the base model to predict the model's specialized tasks we must add additional layers on top of them additionally we define a new output layer as the final output of the pre-trained model will almost certainly differ from the output we want for our model and finally as last step we fine tune our model to improve performance fine tuning entails unfreezing a portion of the base model and training the entire model on the new data set again at a low learning rate the low learning rate improves models performance while preventing overfitting well this completes our first tutorial on overview of transfer learning I'm already so excited about the next tutorial where I'll introduce you to the pre-trained BERT model which was developed by researchers at Google and has beaten human standards in comprehending the English language. We shall be using this uh, pre-trained BERT model to build a fake news detection model via transfer learning later in the third part of the series. Well, I post new machine learning projects every week so do subscribe to my channel. Happy learning to you. Bye.